Hello everyone, Direwolf20 here, and today I'd like to show you something I created recently. Um, I showed you in my last video the um, water, fuel, and oil tanks that I had created. And as you can see, I just added a recently uh, I added a tank for lava. And this is going to be used for my geothermal generators. I created an automatic production line for this. Um, there's a couple things I want to go into real quick before I get started here. Um, first off, uh, water and cooling off these combustion engines. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of right now waiting for all my oil and my fuel to run out of the combustion engines here because basically I'm waiting for them to all empty out because I want to start them over and make sure that they all are kind of even in terms of their fuel levels. But the thing that I discovered about uh, combustion engines is that they take a lot of water. They take a ridiculous amount of water. And if you don't supply them with a good amount of water, they overheat rather quickly. So let me turn off my water output here. And what's going to happen is these guys are going to start to overheat rather quickly. Um, you can see down here I've got some wooden engines that were pumping water into my tanks. And because I just turned off the switch, uh, the water is now draining out of these pipes and filling up over here. So you can see, pretty much as soon as I turned off the water here, uh, these tanks started to drain the water out of their storage areas. And once these guys drain out of the water, uh, it's going to turn orange awfully quickly. I think these stay on the border between green and orange, and uh, that's where it starts to use up water. But you can see how quickly the water is running out. I discovered that you're going to want about um, one output line per three combustion engines. So you can see I've got three, six, nine combustion engines here, and that represents the three outputs that I have in my water tank. So that's three combustion engines per water output that you're going to want to have. Now as soon as I start to see these water levels go down, what's going to happen is once the water reaches empty, you're going to probably see these guys start to turn orange. And I realize these last two aren't running, that's because they did run out of fuel, and I'm waiting to fill them up. I should also note real quick that I've got, um, if you look in the back here, I actually have three pumps filling this system. Um, so again, if you want to do the math on it, you want to have about one pump per three combustion engines cooling them off with water. So I've got nine combustion engines, I've got three pumps going into three tanks, and I've got three outputs, one from each tank, and oh look, as soon as they ran out of water there, they started to turn orange. That's a problem because it means that they're overheating. Um, soon they'll start to blink between red and orange, so why don't I activate my water output here and start filling them back up with water. Um, now I do have a problem. Now that my redstone engines have cooled off, they aren't quite pumping enough water to keep my combustion engines cooled. So, what am I going to do about that? See, the uh, tanks there aren't really full. So how am I going to resolve this? I added a emergency water pump booster. Basically this is a redstone connection to some steam engines down there, and I can activate the steam engines and they're going to turn on and start pumping power into my wooden engines, and that's going to cause them to heat up a lot faster. So if you pay attention to my wooden engines, and I'm keeping an eye on my combustion engines in the background there, but my wooden engines are now turning to green much faster than they would anyways, and uh, soon they'll turn to orange and then to red. And it's right about the orange level where I want them, and you'll see that the faster the steam, the redstone engines are going, the more water they're pumping into the system. So now my water pump um, is getting these pipes filled up pretty well. And what should be happening is we're getting a good amount of water pumping into these systems here. And like I said, you're going to want one output per three combustion engines. And that should get it to the point where it's putting just enough water into the system to stay ahead of the game in terms of heat generation. So if we wait a few minutes here, we should see, first off, the uh, water is immediately being used as soon as it's landing in the combustion engine. That's why you're not seeing it fill up. Um, it's cooling off these combustion engines a little bit at a time, and it's trying to stay ahead of the heat that's being generated. 
and it is just barely, so it's going to take a minute or two for it to start to cool off the engines. Let's uh, clip the video here for a minute. And we're coming back now just in time to see that some of these guys turned green and the ones that are staying orange are just now turning back to green. And as soon as they turn to green, they should start filling up their water reservoir, uh, which basically means we're able to fill the combustion engines with water faster than they can use it to cool themselves off, which means we have a surplus of water and we have no risk of explosion. So if we wait just a moment here, we should start to see some water filling in. Uh, if we look at some of these other ones, they should be getting their water soon. So this guy's got his water. This guy's just starting to fill up. There you go. That one just started to fill up a little bit. So it's a very small amount of water that's camping just ahead of the game in terms of heat. So anybody who wants to use combustion engines, that's um, three combustion engines per water output per pump. Now the one other modification I made here is that I want to make sure that any time this system is running, I want water not only coming from here, but I also want to keep these tanks full. So I've got a pump, or three actually, outside, pumping out of a big ocean that you saw in my last video. And those are all coming into this teleport pipe here. Um, so this piping system is staying full because of these two engines on the end here. Um, they're actually, if we sneak around behind, instead of um, adding their energy to the system that's going out from my quarry or anything else, they're actually pumping directly over to frequency 4, which is where I have my water pump. So basically, any time the system's on, these two combustion engines are dedicated to making sure that these tanks stay full of water. And then these tanks are being pumped out with redstone into my combustion engines. Now I basically have a combustion system that I never have to worry about. Um, this thing dug a ridiculously large quarry and kind of only used up like that much fuel. And I don't even think the fuel level was totally full when I started. So fuel goes a long way, um, much longer than oil would have otherwise. And you can see my water level starting to fill back up. So that's the um, system that I have here for generating energy. And as you've seen before, I can just change this frequency um, to change what system gets powered. For example, if I want to pump more lava into my system, I can change the frequency to 5. And now instead of powering a quarry, it's powering a pump and some lava is being pumped in here. And you can see my lava level rising. So why don't I switch this back to quarry for now. Speaking of lava, let's head over into this room beyond my auto sorting area. I created a nice little system here, pretty much dedicated to creating lava cells. Let's see how this works. First off, we have a chest with buckets. The buckets are going into an insertion pipe and are trying to go into this bucket filler, which is a mod that I covered and did a spotlight on. So if you don't know what it is, go check out the mod. But basically the bucket filler will fill up buckets with whatever liquid it has available. Um, because it's an insertion pipe, it's only going to put the bucket in. If the bucket can't fit inside the bucket filler, hence there's already one in there, it's just gonna head back into the chest. So we basically have a system that just self-sustains itself. If there is lava to fill up, it'll fill the bucket with lava and output it into this chest, which you can see is full of empty cells. And the empty cells will combine with the bucket of lava that comes in to create a lava cell, which will be output here. I then have this system using the advanced wooden pipe, only pulling out empty buckets. These items are required, so only empty buckets will come out, and are then shot back into the system over here and back into the original chest. So what do you say we check this out? I'm going to run over here and flip my lava output switch. Lava output right there. And that should start pumping lava out. The lava is going to land on this side of the room. Where you can see it's already starting to fill up my bucket filler. Now I do have an energy teleport pipe down here, and it's on frequency 4, the same one as I'm um, using to fill up my, uh, my water pumps, but that's okay. It's only using a small amount of energy to fill up these buckets. 
And you can see as soon as the lava combines with the empty cell, it's creating a lava cell, and the empty buckets are being sent back into the system. I can now go turn off my lava. So no more pumping lava into the system. But the bucket filler does have its own little reservoir, and if we look at it, we can see it's about half full. So we're going to get a handful of geothermal cells from this. So again, this is a self-sustaining system. The only thing I need to do here is basically turn on that lava switch. And as soon as lava starts pumping into the system, it starts creating lava cells for me. And I'll probably build some geothermal generators in this room, and instead of having the lava cells land in a chest, they'll land in the geothermal generator. But for now, I've got this nice automated system. And you can see it just emptied out the last of the lava. So what's going to happen now is a bucket's going to land in here and just wait for more lava. And all the other buckets are just going to hang out in the piping system and continuously rotate around. And if I wanted to, I could even turn this guy off so that we don't have to sit and wait for that. And maybe I'll even put a lever on this guy so I can just have an on-off switch. There we go. Now we don't have to let the system keep running, but it doesn't matter. One way or another it works. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing uh, some of the progress I've made in this world, and I will catch you all next time. Take it easy.